This video comes with a warning, it's not very clear, but at least the code's there so you can look and use and play with that, and I'll put a better explanation at coderobots.org. Enjoy! Here we go! Hello everybody, we've already had a go at making a line following robot, and it was quite a simple controller, it was a bang bang controller, so if I get, get a robot, all we did was we found a line, and then we... Uh, moved away from it, moved towards it, moved away from it, moved towards it, bang, bang, by a given distance and at a given direction. Bang, 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 bang. Now that works. That works okay. It works fine, as we've seen. The but, there's always going to be a but, isn't it? The but is, uh, it's not very good at following sharp curves or going around uh, sharp curves uh, because if the curve's sharp, it moves away, and when it goes back, the line's not there and it doesn't understand why it's not there and so it stops following the line so let's let's make a proportional controller so that's one that when it moves away it reacts and comes back as fast as it possibly can to seek the line so you add in depending on the area the way you start you add that back in times it by a number and get yourself quickly back to follow the line a couple of things a couple of points of order uh, before we start I really like so I'm going to open it up I really like always having the sense of view open when I'm running programs if I have the sense of view open I can see what the sense of view is sensing and I can make sense of it I hope that makes sense can we see now that we're looking at what we want to look at today is the light sensor on three Right now it's showing white and it's showing 100%. I'm not sure I can move this accurately enough over this line to make it completely dark. Uh, oh, I have. Uh, no, I haven't. No, I haven't. It says 25. Um, but if that was right over the center of the black line, that would be naught. So naught is black and white is 100. Pretty binary, isn't it? So halfway between is 50. We'll come back to that in a minute. Uh, another thing I didn't realize, and this is going to make rubbish video, is you can use the arrow keys on your keyboard to move the robot around and position it. I didn't, I didn't realize that, but you, you can't really see that because um, you can't see my keyboard. So that's a little tip if you're using Open Roberta Lab, use the arrow keys to move your robot around. It works really well. Right, let's get rid of the uh, get rid of that sense view. Uh, let's what should we do? Yeah, let's open this up a little bit and have a look at the program. So variables, what's a variable? A variable quite simply is uh, naming, naming something, giving something a plain English, plain whatever language you choose name uh, that you understand further down the program when you want to use it. So that's a variable. Now we can assign a number to it uh, here and now, or we can leave it and create a value for it in the program, which is what we'll do. But first of all, how do we add a variable? If you want to add a variable, you quite simply up by the start in this red block by the start you hit that plus and that'll bring bring one up for you down there that you can name it and number it if you wish so we'll get rid of that have a play with it with all of this have a play and remember again there is no absolutely correct answer with coding as long as you get to an answer that works um, the better answers have the least lines of code that's that is a coding truth because the more code you use, the more memory you're using in your computer and the less interesting stuff you can do with the, the memory you've eaten up with your Slack code. <laughs> Went off subject there, didn't I? So, variables. Let's have a look at these variables that we're going to use in this program. So the first one is error. We'll calculate that in, in our program, so don't worry about that for the minute. Now, gain. Now, this is a number that is a, that we're going to use to help snap the robot back to the target line and then steering again we'll assign that in the program that is that's the number we're going to arrive at having introduced gain as well to steer it back onto course and then the light target well that's that is as as it almost suggests and that's why i wrote light target that is what halfway between naught and 100 is 50 so let's try and find 50 when the thing's working so, 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 let's actually, let's open this up and show you something else while we're doing it. Doing it this way, with a single color or light sensor, you're gonna struggle to find the center of the line. It's easier if you've got two. So in this example, we've only got one. You will be able to, but it's easier if 
uh, if you find one side or the other. Why do you say one side or the other, sir? I'll tell you why I say one side or the other. Can you see there's, there's plainly two paths here? If we came up to the line and then we aligned ourselves with the left hand side, so we moved our arrow away and snapped back to the right to find the line every time, that hand signal might be the wrong way around. I'm not sure, camera reverses things. So we snap back to the right, we'll end up tracking around the left hand side of the line. So that would take us up there and up there. If we move, come to the right and then and correct left, we'll end up coming down the left hand side. Now can you see here, it comes around here, that's the left hand track there. It goes around, round, 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 round until we hit that block there. In fact, we can Let's move that little thing. Oh, I don't know what will happen there. We'll find out. Um, so, yeah, it'll probably blow up there. So we can follow one side of the line or the other. That's a little trick you can use um, with a proportional line follower. So we find, so our error then, this is what our error is going to be. It's going to be the light target, whatever that is. So we go off and find the light. So if it's, for argument's sake, 60, we're going to need to reduce or change our steering to reduce that number. So we want to steer left in this case. Um, and then follow the line. And once we follow the line, we'll steer right. And that will bang us off to the right-hand side of the line. So left and right, left and right, left and right. So we've got that error. So we've set the error. And our steering, steering amount is steering times gain. So... Well, we'll have a play. We'll, we'll start at 10 and then we'll move that number up and down. But that's basically how sensitive it is, how sensitive it's going to be. Let's just run the program and see. Let's just run the program. So there you go. Now, our bang bang would have struggled getting around that bit. And I'm in, quite intrigued to see what's going to happen when we reach down there. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave it to that. Now let's make this bigger. Let's make it bigger. Now, oh! Hmm, now I wonder what can we do to correct that? So what was happening there? It was, it overreacted perhaps. So let's see, so let's change, let's change that gain number, let's half it. Um, there's another thing called PID controllers and PID controllers is something we might yet go, get onto. Um, but just remember that term PID proportional integrative and there we go around the corner around the corner so now we're putting less steering back in when we go around the corner so we want to have just enough but not too much we want the goldilocks zone oh, maybe that was too much again so let's try that again let's bring that number let's half it again let's half it again every time 2.5 Let's bring our robots. Well, I suppose we can just start it here, can't we? Prove my uh, prove my assertions there. Now you can see it's not as nervous. No, still too nervous. Let's go. All right, it's half and again. Trial and error. That's the only thing I'll do it. Oh no. Hmm. Ah, so it's sort of proportional. Well, let's turn it right up. We're going right down. Or oh, let's no, let's let's alright, let's go this way first. Let's go right down to start with. And see if that'll work. Let's turn that around there. Bring this over here and hit play again. Oh no, now that's too little. It's not turning enough, is it? So we definitely go up. So we started at 10, didn't we? Let's jump up to 20. Let's jump up to 20 and see what happens. Let's go the other way. Again, you can see how jumpy it is. What else could we do? What else could we do? I know what else we could do. What we also need to do, quite possibly, is slow down when we reach a corner. So we know not only to change the angle of steering, but we need to change how fast we're going. Because I bet 
if I turn the speed down, let's turn the speed down to 60. Let's put this back at 10. And let's turn this around. And let's go. I bet you, by turning the speed down, we'll get around the corner a little bit better. So we seem to sort of be getting proportional line following working. Ah, there we go. But we need to introduce all oh, now. Let's see what happens here. Oh, that blows it up. So we'd have to have a work around for that, wouldn't we? So we need to introduce a change in speed when we get to a corner as well. But that's for another video. Have a go. There's a code. Let, let me drag this back so you can see. Have a have a play. Have a think about what's happening and have a look at variables. So once you've set the variables, you'll find them down here. So there's the variables that you've created up here, and then you'll find them down there. Have fun, enjoy yourselves, see you, see you next time.